another 2024 goal here. Dude, I got to fix my, my memory here. <laughs> Remind me to send that back in. I think there's a lifetime warranty on that memory stick. Where is it? Uh, eventually I'll sit in and I got to send it in another broken Seagate drive. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Seagate, man, they suck. Talk about the worst drives in the world. Does anybody even like Seagate? Seagate drives? Is there any Seagate drive lovers out in the crowd? I don't know. Do you know any YouTubers that chill Seagate drives? <laughs> Never is or was. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, Seagate drives aren't the, well, they are probably the worst. Nah, there's probably some cheap knockoff drives that are worse than Seagate. They definitely have had the, traditionally, out of all the drives I've ever owned, Seagate has had the absolute worst, worst problems for me. I'd say professionally and personally, I've had more Seagate drives fail than any other brand provider out there. And maybe that's just, uh, obviously, it's not scientific. It's not like I ran a thousand drives, and out of that thousand, here's the numbers. But I don't know. Just from a topical perspective, just looking at it and going, hey, I don't know. Seagate drives tend to fail way more than the rest, at least from what I usually get. I mean, comparing it to like Western digital drives and stuff, I did have a Western digital drive slow down on me, but it never really ever failed. It was just started to, you know, started to run slower. And I was like, ah, screw this drive. And I just threw it in trash. So I think, but I've never had one just completely crap out on me. Like the Seagate ones, they literally just die. I don't know. Had bad luck with Western Digital as well. Yeah, I, you know, I'm trying to think. I know this sounds terrible, but a lot of those enterprise drives, they cost almost double the residential stuff. But it feels like the enterprise drives really do, they're worth the money. Like if you have a business and you're putting in like residential Iron Wolf red NAS drives, I don't know, man. I feel like that's just rest setting up for a recipe for failure. You're better off just shilling out for the, the enterprise drive solution. I, I don't know. Just my two cents. I know it's not cost effective, but hey data that that is pretty important and it's worth it's worth those uh paying the extra money i think seagate drives you either get all good ones or all bad ones yeah i think i had uh i was thinking the es.2 line back in the early 2010s i had a batch of es those es.2 drives they they were sas drives and um Man, those things, I remember I had like, no, I think I had the whole batch die on me from Seagate. I had two go out right in a row and it took down the entire raid array. They both died on the same day. And that was probably the worst drive failure I've ever had in my career. And then I slowly was like, oh my gosh. And then I think over the next six months i had every single one of their drives fail one by one and as long as you're keeping up with most of the drive replacements it wasn't that big a deal it was just annoying and uh after then i was like man that kind of solidified seagay's bottom spot for me but that was pretty bad <laughs> and buy one enterprise driver set up two residential and set them up for raid one <laughs> yeah uh that's funny. Used enterprise drives for home dev is great as well. 100%. Just watch how much, uh, how many hours are on those used drives. That's the main thing. If they have over five years of runtime, typically I wouldn't use those. So it, it depends because even the enterprise stuff with over five years of runtime, it's definitely long in the tooth and you're better off just buying the residential counterpart at that point that's where i think the, the trade-off begins but some of those used enterprise drives only have a couple years of runtime and uh, at that point you're fine and it also depends on how many read writes and other factors to the drives but those are very good points